Coming up next on the auction block, it's one of the largest sales for the railroad auction in a standing room only. The usual cast of characters lined up to find the deal of a lifetime. And tonight, it's all about the collectibles, the rare signs, and the hard to find. What will go for big money, and who will walk away empty handed? Find out next on the auction block. Antique and collectibles auction. Uh, we have them about once every three or four months. We'll have one selling antique collectible stuff. That uh, we have tonight specifically. We had a guy that collected the signs and stuff like that, and older stuff for a number of years. And he just kind of thinning his uh, inventory down, so to speak, uh, and brought a bunch of stuff up to sell for him. The Coca-Cola signs and advertisement stuff, neon clocks and thermometers and stuff like that. Stuff's get, older stuff's getting harder and harder to find. I mean, and you, somebody wanting to get liquidate a little collection, I mean, that's kind of, a, kind of a pretty good deal. We got some old tin friction toys for fire engines. Made in Japan. Most of the stuff you find now would be made in Taiwan or something like that. And these are made in Japan, some of the stuff's made in the USA. There's old uh, Greyhound bus friction. And there's another one. This one's kind of neat. You open the door, and you got a passenger in the door. When you close the door for them to sit down, and then you show the passengers in the windows of the bus. Uh, old ball, a couple old ball gloves. There's one here and another one here. And there's a baseball. It's from Carroll's Shoe Store, the friendly store in King Street, South Carolina. I was told, that's before my time, that it was uptown on Main Street, uh, where Carroll Kaliski was up there where uh, Scotty's Drugs used to be on Main Street, and I don't know what's there now. There's a finance company there now. And, uh, but these, these toys come out, they were in an attic, the guys, uh, Mother passed away last year, and they're selling, we're sell, getting their house ready to sell. And this is all their toys they played with when they were little. That set up in the uh, was in the attic. And some of them, you can tell some of them was well played with, and some of them still some nice pieces. Old board games and stuff like that. Oh, bolt on headlights off old bicycle, battery operated. Still got the switch on it. Reflectors on the back. Old tractor, old truck, all that kind of good stuff. And that's a 1941 ideal bicycle. Guy hasn't sold all the signs, had a collection of stuff. He had that thing restored about four or five years ago, in garnet and black. Called the Carolina Cruiser, they got painted on the side of it. Uh, on that bicycle, I'm, I've seen rough ones bring $100, $150. I'm figuring that'll probably bring maybe $250 to $400, ballpark figure. We've got a couple old Coca-Cola boxes. Uh, somebody just want one to restore to put in a man cave or something of that nature. Uh, people take those things and make grills out of them. I've seen them take and put them on uh, axles and make little carts out of them to pull behind motorcycles and stuff like that. We've got some neon signs, and some of it's newer stuff, Budweiser, and uh, I think there's a light beer sign down there. And there's some old signs, that one, a uh, dimming pump sign from the White Rose Plumbing and Mullins has got a four digit telephone number. 
So that's an old sign. That Coca Cola is a uh, dated 1942 little Coca Cola bottle sign. And uh, pet dairies, foods with like a milk and ice cream and stuff like that. Uh, there's some old cigarette advertisements, Coca Cola signs again. There's another cigarette sign over here. It's got a different kind of tobacco products on it. Uh, Myers water pumps. And some old railroad lanterns up here on the wall. And, uh, and this is a cool thing. It's an old neon yum clock. I don't know what the yum is for, whether it was some kind of ice cream shop or something like that. But the neon around the clock, and the clock works. But the wire, there's not a plug on it, and we kind of, I don't know whether the rest of the neon works or not, but there's nothing broke on it, so it'd be easily fixed. It might need to be recharged. There's an old Coca-Cola rack, used to sit outside service stations and stuff like that. This stove up here, a guy brought in. He used it in his house up until three years ago. It's an electric stove. And the old cast iron sink come out the kitchen. The same house. The stove, we sold, we sold a good bit of gas and uh, wood stoves like that, but I, I've never sold an electric one like that. But I'm figuring maybe $100, $125, $150. There's a nice oak bookcase that we refinished over the holidays. Nice uh, old cedar chest slide under the bed, it's on wheels. And that's a cool piece up there, the old worm. Caterpillar thing, right swing, come off a swing set in Philadelphia, and uh, I think it said it come out to State Park in Philadelphia. The neat old wooden train. Pennsylvania Railroad, all wood, somebody made a long time ago. Uh, old doll cradle. Uh, instead of old doctor's office scales back there. And we've sold a few of those sets and they'll probably bring $100, $125. There's a dump track wagon off the, used to go behind little pedal tractors. We got to, had the wagon for a little while, and hadn't been able to find a tractor to go with it, so we put it out to sell. <clears throat> There's a pair of Fenton lamps up there. I'm figuring they'll probably bring 100, 125 a piece. And this is a cool piece, it's a uh, Victorian time frame. It's a clothes dryer. You put a little sticks out, hang your clothes on them. That was before Kenmore and Whirlpool and such. <laughs> I mean that way it'd fold up and go in the closet. How much might that go for? Uh probably forty, fifty dollars. We've got an old Hoosier cabinet back in. The old kitchen cabinet, they got the flour bin in it. You used to put flour in there to keep it safe, and just you turn the crank and get to sift the flour out. I had a one of my grandfather's sisters had one of those in the, her kitchen. And when we were little, two, three, four, five years old, we'd go to her house and she'd have bis homemade biscuits sitting in a tub inside that her Hoosier cabinet. And that was our big deal. We'd get a cold glass of ice water and a biscuit <laughs> as a treat. This is a neat piece, it's an old pine ice box. Ice truck come by once a week, drop you off a block of ice and you put it in there to keep it cold. There's an old farm bell. Put that on a piece of pipe or something on the back, in the backyard and by the porch and they ring the bell. And it's aluminum. They put that on by the back porch and ring the bell at dinner time, supper time, what have you. That's a Victorian doll bed. People like to they collect dolls and stuff like that. Older dolls, they like to have those to display them on. <laughs> That's a marionette, Pinocchio marionette thing, and it's made in England. It's got the tag on the front. 
It's in kind of rough shape, but it'd be neat to restore, but it's, it's motorized. You plug it in and it would make them do the little thing, you know? It's kind of different. It needs, needs to be restored, but restored would be a nice piece. Got an Empire uh, nightstand. That's a nice set of Linux china with ducks on it. A lot of people like, like ducks. That's not real old, but it's still, a lot of people collect Linux. And this is a neat piece. That's a Parra spittoon. You seen the stainless steel trash cans you stick your foot on and they pop up? This will go in the parlor. You, got it, you had your dip, had to take a spit, step on it, plug it in there, and <laughs> imagine having one in the grandmama's living room. You know? <laughs> we've got some, uh, some of the nicest, cleanest silver dollars we've had in a while. We've got some gold coins. We've got a one dollar gold coin that's pre-Civil War, is dated 1851. And I've got a couple of pre-Civil War 250 gold coins. And I've got a pre-Civil War $10 gold coin. Then we've got a post-Civil War uh, two dollar and a half Indian head gold piece. And I've got a uh, 1881 $5 gold piece and an 1876 $20 gold piece. And price of, with the price of gold up, I mean, some people's turning to lose some of the coins, some of them's holding on to them, hoping they'll go higher. And that's a, all those are large cents. They range from uh, 1819 through 1853. And we've got three Carson City silver dollars. And the Carson Cities are more collectible because of the fact they only, the Carson City Mint was only in operation for a short number of years. And, uh, that's a 1925 Stone Mountain half dollar. That's got uh, Stonewall Jackson and Robert E. Lee on it. They from Stone Mountain in Georgia. It's commemorative coin they did men in one year. And uh, we've got a few new, newer proof sets that's all silver and a little bit of jewelry, sterling silver pieces. And there's an old watch, ladies' watch. Somebody's done flipped it over, but it's got a sapphire on the winding stem. Kind of a neat old watch. That's the old John Deere. It's not as old as the other one. This is die, uh, die cast. The other one is metal. But a lot of people like to get those things and you know restore them. And I like the three-wheel tricycle that's chain-driven. Most of your tricycles have just pedals on the front wheel, but that one's actually chain-driven. It's probably from the probably from the late 40s, early 50s. And that's a neat piece. We've got some hand-tied rugs. Now, I've never seen one like this, but this has got, actually got straw on the back of it. And that's kind of different. It's kind of an Indian motif on it. So it's probably, probably Native American or something like that. And there's some older hand-tied rugs on there. And that's about, that's about it right now. Tonight, the auction house filled with one of the largest crowds we've ever seen. And among the sea of faces were some very familiar ones who've been scoping out the place looking for just the right deal. We're here at Railroad Auction, uh, the first sale of the year. Looks like it's gonna be one of the biggest and best he's had in a good while. He has got a tremendous crowd and it's not even six o'clock yet and I can't wait for the auction to begin. This is the first sale of the year and they've been advertising this is a really lots of antiques. So I'm normally in their auctions you get some antiques mixed with other household items. Tonight it's pretty much all old pieces. Um, take for instance, this old toy is a Popeye spinach can. They've lost the lid. They had the lid several weeks ago but it got lost. But watch when you took the lid off, Popeye shoots out the top. Just they've got a lot of neat old toys and all kinds of things to perk your interest. He has got a tremendous collection of advertisement pieces, uh, anything from Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, cigarette signs, uh, Coca-Cola coolers, Tom jars, Lance jars, Griswolds, any kind of collectibles and antiques, uh, advertisement pieces he's got. Plus he's got a, a building full of refinished furniture. Everybody's been in anticipation of what's gonna be on the block tonight and 
looking over the crowd in the parking lot when I drove up, I don't think you're going to get too many bargains tonight because there are too many people here that are wanting to bid. They've got some neat old signs. They've got some neat old, old furniture. They've got some uh, hand-pegged pieces over there. So you've got a lot of real antique dealers, I think, tonight that'll be getting going home with a lot of good items, but at a cost. I don't think we're going to have too many bargains tonight. This is the first time I've ever seen this many people out here at one time. It's a lot of people out. But I hope everyone gets what they want. Uh, just about every day for the last three weeks while he's been closed, I come by every day, look at stuff, get some ideas on what I'm interested in, what I want to pay for it, and I'm ready. You gotta kinda, in mind, know what you want to bid on and set a limit. You know, there's a dish I want and I'm willing to go up to $50. You know, what, that's just however much it means to you and what you're willing to give for it. Going after the Coca-Cola drink boxes, he's got a 1947 die cut. Uh, Coca-Cola sign on the wall, it's dated 47, I'm interested in that. He's got a 1961 uh, refinished bicycle I like. Uh, and he's got all kind of signs, any sign that I can buy, I'm gonna buy. I um, came out here looking for more electronics, but it doesn't seem like they have too many electronics out tonight. More like a lot of antiques. Nothing in particular tonight. There's not a thing here I need, although there is one sign over there on the wall that I really would like to take home with me. We'll just have to wait and see how high it goes. Which sign is it? I'm not telling. <laughs> Last man standing wins. And now it's time to get down to business. Let's turn it over to Ronald and Edward and start this auction. Yeah, I 
With the last item sold and rolled out of the auction, we find that Muck couldn't quite get his hands on the one Coke sign he had his sights set on. Though Virginia walked away with a few collectible toys, Julius walked away empty handed. But it was the kitchen staff that was left in shambles as they quickly ran out of food after tonight's huge crowd. She kept coming up, what have y'all got left? I mean, we had plenty when she was asking, right? We had plenty of food. And she said, well, I'll be back later. Uh -oh. And last time she came back, we done sold everything. I started to call you on the telephone to see if you'd take my order. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get through here. I seen Karen back here in two and a half hours later. She said, I just ordered. <laughs> That's most people have been in this field a long time. <laughs> See, that was fun. That's right. I love it when it's like that. That's right. It was non-stop. Oh, the whole yeah. night it was non-stop. Yeah, non -stop. Come on, we stopped when we had order list this long, man. And people coming up, you got my order in yeah. <laughs> You know, you got ten ahead of you, so oh my goodness. What do you guys think some of the, the crazier sales were? Some of the things that probably sold for more than you thought they would? Nothing ever sells for more. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about the stuff that didn't sell for enough. <laughs> yeah. Every, everything sells for not enough. <laughs> Alright, what sold for not enough? What were some of the big sales? Everything. That stove should have sold for more. Yeah. That stove, and you know, it should have went for more than that pedal trap that they did sell but for $40, that was cheap. You didn't handle no steering wheel on it, but it's still this old pedal trap. <laughs> he has just lost his direction. <laughs> about, about like it's over. <laughs> it is, it is didn't break, but 125, it was cheap. That's all. That was cheap. Can you remember, I have, I have one of those tractors just like that one. So did Benji. Yep. Remember, he had a little trailer yeah, behind it. Yep. Yeah, but you sold the tires up for me. I did. <laughs> I brought them to the great old auction. <laughs> if you had any food to eat, it'd be better. 